Good morning. What a great pleasure to uh, be here in virtual Birmingham. Uh, so can I just echo Cheryl and Nina's welcome? It's fantastic to be here. It's very sad we can't be face to face. And if there's anyone out there waiting for the 8.30 from uh, Houston to Birmingham, I'm sorry. Um, we, I, but can I thank the team for immediately pivoting to a, an online uh, event? We're going to have a terrific day. We've got fantastic uh, speakers. And my job is to set the scene at a high level of this important international conference. We have people online from scores of countries. And the theme of today is data for global health and society. And my role is to try and convince you that data is core infrastructure and that we're at an inflection point globally and that if we work in partnership across disciplines, across sectors, with public engagement at every step of the way, there is a huge opportunity over the next five years to yield great value, not only in terms of innovation and research, but in terms of translation into patient care, public health and the design and delivery of quality assured health systems. Um, next slide, please. And a key theme today is partnerships. And can I just briefly thank our 12 terrific collaborators who have all subscribed to co-hosting this conference uh, from a whole spectrum of organizations, from the AMRC through to Our Future Health, through to NIHR to Cancer Research UK. Hugely grateful uh, because if we're going to deliver on the promise of health data science, it will require partnership at scale. Uh, next slide. So what I'm going to do over the next uh, 20 minutes is firstly put health data science in context. Secondly, describe the role that we have, we feel HDR UK has as a convener. And lastly, talk about impact. What's, what's the value, the utility and benefit to patients and populations? Next slide, please. So let's let's have some context. Next slide. So the theme of today is um, is global health. So denominators are important, and many of you will recall that on the fifteenth of November, the United Nations estimated that it was the first time that eight billion people were living on planet Earth. Really, quite a remarkable statistic. Even more remarkable, I think, you know, I'm still a relatively young man. I was born in 1964. But when I looked at the data, it was estimated that only 3.2 billion people lived on planet Earth in 1964. So in my short lifetime, the population of the, the Earth has increased by 250%. It's a major macro issue and challenge. Next slide, please. Hand in hand with um, uh, increasing global population has been an amplification of health inequalities, as illustrated on this slide, both at the international level, the theme of today's conference, we'll hear later from Trudy and Maurizio, and also at the national level. So how do we use health data science to really um, uh, address inequalities across society? Next slide, please. At the same time, we're seeing remarkable changes in technology in, uh, at scale. And if you look at technology trends across a whole spectrum of uh, 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 approaches, whether it's sensors, whether it's devices, whether it's semantic web, we've seen remarkable progress in the last uh, 10 years. And we've also seen a confluence of technologies. So the, the, the top example is sensors. And at the bottom of the slide, you'll see that by the year 2030, we estimate that almost 30 billion devices will be connected to the Internet of Things. And most of those will be consumer devices. So for a challenge for us in healthcare and biomedicine is how can we harness these technologies at scale for patient benefit? And if we build the slide, a good example is exercise. If we build the slides, it's exascale computing, 
We're now at the stage, and you'll see on the left of the slide, Boris Johnson having a tour of um, the supercomputer in the UK. We're at the stage of exascale computing, which is a billion, billion computations per second. Next slide, please. And scale is also important. So what we've witnessed is um, that if we look at data at scale, it yields tremendous insights. This slide shows the relationship between mortality and blood pressure. The Framingham study of 5,000 people is on the left-hand side of the slide. On the right-hand side of the slide is UK Biobank. And it shows the resolution and the insights from scale. UK Biobank, I was at the showcase last week with Naomi Allen, Rory Collins, a colleague. Truly remarkable, the insights from 500,000 people. Imagine the insights that we can derive from tens of millions of people in a trustworthy way. Next slide, please. So we often talk about 4P medicine, and here's Leroy Hood talking about 4P medicine, enabled by informatics, data science, and phenotyping. However, next slide, please. We have to consider the context, next slide, of the society we're living in. And we're talk talking about 4P society and the pressures of Putin pandemic, uh, public sector unrest, as we're seeing today, and also the pressure of inflation. So as we take forward our ideas in health data science, we have to think about the context we're living in. Next slide. And one of those is NHS productivity. If you look at productivity in the UK overall, it's flatlined since uh, 2008. And if you, one looks at NHS productivity, it actually uh, is also a major challenge. And a good way to address productivity is to look at data infrastructure and skills at scale and to innovate. And indeed, this was echoed today in the news by the Institute of Fiscal Studies, which were, were commenting on the productivity of the NHS post-pandemic. So partnership with the NHS in the UK is absolutely vital to yield benefit. Next slide, please. So the concept here is data as an infrastructure and data as an intangible asset. So what is an intangible asset? This is some work of the Treasury a few years ago, and they showed that in terms of value, the five top companies in, in the world, most of their value, 95%, was in intangible assets, data and intellectual property. The flip side is when you look at the public sector, it's less than, it's less than 2%. So the opportunity is to harness the benefits of intangible assets, including data for public benefit. Next slide, please. And if we look at the top performing health systems in the world, what do they do? Next slide. They use data at the macro level, the meso level, and the micro level in near real time to drive improvements. And I would argue this is the opportunity working in partnership with clinical teams, with health systems, with policymakers to drive health data science to improve health at scale. Next slide, please. So where are we going with this? Well, I'm pleased to say, next slide, that um, making good progress in terms of the focus on the interface between mathematics, statistics, computational science, and medicine. Next slide. But challenges persist. Challenges persist around access to data, governance, skills, and the most important one, trustworthiness. How do we demonstrate trustworthiness as we harness the benefits of data uh, at scale? And if one looks at other mature data ecosystems, they have established standards, policies, procedures, public engagement that address these at scale. Next slide, please. And that allows us to develop a mature data ecosystem where we move from the bilateral one-to-one -one relationship to the many-to-many -many relationship, therefore unleashing the, um, the, the, uh, the power of data across a multitude of um, uh, benefits. But to do that, one needs to look at the, the tools of the ecosystem. Next slide, please. And that was really, next slide, the origins of HDR UK. Next slide, when in 2018, 
uh, funders, next slide please, came together to, um, and I can I call out the funders who I think were prescient, firstly in their collaboration, but secondly to see the opportunity and the need to do this at scale across the UK. And our mission, as you know, is to harness the tools of the fourth industrial revolution to enable, unite data to enable discoveries that improve people's lives. Can we run studies on up to 66 million people? Next slide, please. And I'm, I've had the privilege and the honor of uh, working with such talent across the UK in so many sectors. And I'm delighted working with 86 organizations um, across the four nations. Next slide. We have an outstanding leadership team across many sectors, and I'm delighted that the majority of our leaders uh, are women across the UK. Next slide, please. And uh, in terms of how it's going, just one or two. Um, next slide, please. First of all, um, in terms of infrastructure, we've created a community of uh, over 70 organizations who subscribe to the principles of fair uh, data sharing, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable in a trustworthy way. That has enabled us to define some of the tools for sharing data, for example, the five safes approach in partnership with the ONS and endorsed by the Goldacre Review. Uh, and this has enabled, for example, nine data research hubs, which have spun out over 500 projects across the UK. So examples of infrastructure at scale across the UK. Next slide, please. In terms of academic, this is the common currency of academia, papers. So in terms of papers, there have been over 2,300 papers, 66,000 citations in the first four years. Uh, in areas such as public health, molecules to EHR. Next slide, please. But of course, during COVID, we exemplified the use of data at scale. And I think this was a fantastic example of a convergence of research data science with policy makers and system leaders so that the researchers could rapidly respond to national need at scale. Next slide, please. And what we saw in COVID was the ability to spin up large trusted research environments on up to 60 million people. Fantastic work with Open Safely. Fantastic work as illustrated here with the British Heart Foundation Data Science Center, enabling research on COVID, but within the context of a secure multiple linked data set on 50 million people. And, and read the quote from the British Medical Journal um, uh, viewpoint, uh, which accompanied this article. For the first time, we geared up the ability to link data on a national scale and through partnership with Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the Sale Data Bank and EVE2, really transformational findings. Next slide, please. One example of that is the safety of vaccines. Uh, as published in Lancet Digital Health, illustrating the, um, the benefits of vaccination in different, different age groups. Next slide, please. But of course, this leaves a legacy. Data as infrastructure, one part of that uh, ability to link data was to curate data on population-based prescribing in England. 30 billion data items. We spend 20 billion pounds a year on medicines. So curate once, use often for the public benefit. So what we're trying to do, and this work is led by Richard Soffit and Blake Dark in NHS England, is curate data sets of huge value and make them available. And working in partnership, we hope to, to enable the use of primary care data by working with our GP colleagues by demonstrating the, the, the benefits and the safeguards at scale. Next slide, please. In terms of training, um, 
Uh, Sarah Cadman, Chris Yao, Tim Frayling lead our training program. We want to democratize access to health data science at scale. If you graduate from Stanford, from any faculty, arts and humanities, STEM subjects, 95% of graduates have some sort of data science qualification. So we're trying to democratize access to uh, health data science uh, at scale. Next slide, please. And a great example of that is the Black Internship Program, which is going from strength to strength. Now in its third year, we have data to show this has acted as an accelerator for uh, the Black intern's career progression. And we are looking for new partner organizations. We, we, we usually host uh, up to 100 interns, so we are looking for some new partner organizations. I urge you to subscribe. Next slide, please. And of course, I talked about public engagement through the leadership of Angela Coulter, Amanda White, and many others. We have baked in public engagement every step of our way in terms of our governance, but also in terms of the research design of, of our portfolio. And I'm completely convinced it makes our research better. So trustworthiness, demonstrating one is honest, reliable, competent, is absolutely vital. And into my mind, uh, makes the research, the insights and the, the, the research questions more honed because we will translate uh, data science into need. I think it was Osler who said he was the father of modern medicine, Canadian physician. He said, if you listen to the patient for long enough, they will tell you the diagnosis. It's the same as health data science. Next slide, please. And underpinning this are values. I think in today's society, values across society are increasingly important. So we initially had transparency, optimism, respect, and courage. And then Caroline Cape and I thought we need a torch. So we added humility, which arguably is, is the best, the best value. Next slide, please. And this has been recognized, our work. We're still in the foothills of where we need to be, but the ability to convene a community at scale across the UK to address national need was recognized by Patrick Valance and Chris Whitty. Next slide, please. Um, but I would su suggest that we are in the foothills of where we need to be. If we're going to move forward, then we need to look at building out an ecosystem with a strong convener and looking at looking at key issues around access, governance, and public trust. And this is the focus of our next five years. Next slide, please. So looking ahead, and we've just been through our peer review, so we are around for another five years. So can I thank the funders for their confidence in us after a very rigorous peer review? Uh, next slide, please. We're going to do three things. We're going, we have a triple A. Firstly, build a research data infrastructure, which is scalable, reliable, secure, by assembling a connected infrastructure. Secondly, don't build it and they will come. Have research driver programs, which derive, deliver public benefit, but also clean the pipes of the infrastructure. And lastly, work in partnership at scale and be an international example of team science, learning from best practice wherever it is in the world. Next slide, please. So just to briefly illustrate each of those aims, every data, data ecosystem has components. Because what we're trying to do is connect consumers with content providers in a trustworthy way. So we have an alliance, we have a gateway, which is beginning to be a shop window for the tools, the policies, and being able to access their data. But then one needs expertise in technology, uh, in training, in uh, trust and transparency, and in phenomics, which is data quality at scale. So we're, we're putting together a package of activities with nationwide leadership to provide open tools, which will be available to everyone as we craft out this ecosystem. Next slide, please. We have six driver programs to illustrate the benefits of these. So these are not program grants. They are designed to be research-led, 
addressing issues relevant to policymakers and uh, and researchers, but will leave a benefit legacy. For example, we have one on pandemics and outbreaks led by Sharon Peacock and Kenny Bailey. We have one on um, judicious use of medicines led by Munir Permahanad and Liz Sapi, so that we we learn as we go at scale, but programs on up to 66 million people. Next slide, please. And finally, partnerships. So we, we're intent on staying as lean as possible within the welcome in London, working with the best people in the world. We have eight fantastic national and regional partnerships and building on the work of uh, the ICODA initiative, we, uh, where we're already sharing data across 42 countries in a trustworthy way in 12 driver projects. And just to call out the, the, the leadership of Steve Kern in the Gates Foundation for funding that, we feel we can learn and collaborate globally really to try and scale out the benefits of health data science. Next slide, please. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, collaboration is key. Next slide. Uh, and just to call out for Ken Kukia from The Economist, this is being recognized and speaking next, so I thought I should give him a call out. Um, the opportunity for the UK to achieve alignment through collaboration, collaborate at the interface, compete at the implementation. That should allow us to show benefit at scale. Next slide. And to do that, we're going to partner with the NHS, with Tim Ferriss, who's speaking later, Claire Bloomfield and the uh, SDE policy. So NHS partnership is key. Next slide, please. Uh, thinking beyond health data, if we build that, please. Because if we're going to address global challenges, we need to look at cross-sectoral data sharing. If we're looking at climate change and the impact on health, we need geospatial data, air pollution data. So how do we do that in a trustworthy way? Next slide, please. We're doing that under the leadership of Hans-Erik Aronson and the support of UKRI as part of the DARE program. And final slide, please. And there's the DARE components. Next slide, please. And finally, thinking globally and under the stewardship of Trudy Lang and colleagues across Brazil, South America, Asia, we're testing some of these assumptions with a global perspective. Final slide, please. So that's what we hope to achieve in the next five years. Thank you for your leadership your support, your contribution, and contribution to open science and teamwork, which we think is going to be absolutely vital as we try to assemble uh, the integrity of a trustworthy health data research ecosystem with broad global impact. And final slide, please, I will finish with a quote from Marie Curie. We, uh, we always focus on what lies ahead, uh, as we should, because we're, we're all supported by the public pound and we've got to serve and deliver the most impact that we can. So thank you very much for listening. I will now pass over to Cathy Sudlow.